for my senior project, I hand sewed 100 stuffed toys to donate to Concord Hospital, and I also volunteered there. This is the outfit I have to wear when I volunteer. And the topic I focused on was the art of healing. So what is healing? Why is it so important? We've all probably had physical injuries that we've had to heal from, but perhaps the most important form of healing is not physical, but mental healing. This is because when your mind is healed, when your mind is happy and healthy, then so are you. If you're mentally happy, then it doesn't really matter what physical state you're in, because most likely you'll be mentally happy as well. Mental health is so important, so necessary to living a healthy lifestyle. And yet, how often do we take the time to make ourselves healthy, to heal ourselves? We've all been to the doctor before, probably even regularly, for physical healing, our physical health. And yet, how many of us go to a therapist just as regularly for our mental healing, our mental health? Now, at the rates that a good therapist charges per session, this is probably a good thing. They can uh, charge hundreds of dollars an hour. And yet, even at these ridiculous prices, did you know that the typical form of talk therapy often does not work for the client? Did you know that some people have been so extremely haunted by their memories, by their experiences, that just talking them through simply is not good enough? For some people, these experiences stay inside of them. Those memories, they're all still there, haunting them, hurting them. These people do not get easy relief, and these people are not mentally healthy. So what can they do? What other options are out there for them to begin the process of healing? How can they feel good again when therapists who are paid top dollar to do what they do can, can do nothing for them? Well, one woman by the name of Gabrielle Ora Marie was once in this exact situation. She was, she was living in a broken down room, barely alive after a lifetime of severe abuse, trauma, and human trafficking. She had sexually transmitted diseases coursing through her veins, and her past haunted her. After a lifetime of this horror, Gabrielle was told to see a therapist, and since then she has been to countless talk therapy sessions. Those sessions worked well for her, but they could never make her whole again. She said, I could talk about rape or torture, being sold as a child prostitute, being used for child pornography. I could talk about these things until I was blue in the face, and I did. But it stayed inside and tormented me. Seeing that their sessions together were not quite working, Gabrielle's therapist told her to paint what she felt, and memories that had been haunting her came flooding out. Now, the question is, wasn't it terrifying to revisit these memories through the art she made? To this, she said, never, not once. In fact, the more dreadful the pain I got down on canvas, the happier and more thrilled I was. Basically, I painted my way out of hell. She felt lighter and more human for each memory she told through her paintings. Art therapy was able to bring back humanity. I've, she says, I've already come further in this life than I would have ever thought possible. I'm the happiest I've ever been. Art therapy worked for Gabrielle. Creating artwork to express her feelings allowed her, for her negative experiences to be externalized. Research has shown that experiences stay within clients when they are unable to express them correctly through words. That is another important aspect of using art to heal. Words are unnecessary. Art has no language and no limit. However, speech restricts a person's ability to show what they are trying to describe. And in talk therapy, this can cause a major barrier between the client and the therapist um, because of the words chosen by the client and understood by the therapist. And this miscommunication can accidentally convey the issue incorrectly or cause the issue to be understood incorrectly. This happens because some feelings cannot be told through words alone. But 
It was found that art was able to bridge the feelings of the client to the understanding of the therapist. It was realized that people were able to draw their dreams, but not describe them. This proves that, that pictures are worth a thousand words. After researching details about art therapy and interviewing the head of the art therapy services at Concord Hospital, I found that the most commonly asked question before a patient begins art therapy is, what do I do if I'm not artistic? And I totally understand this question. Because if I considered myself not to be artistic, but then I was told to go do art therapy, I would probably be intimidated. But another great aspect to art therapy, you don't need to have ever painted or drawn before in your life. Even Gabrielle or Anne Marie said, what's funny is I had never painted be before, but I loved it, and it helped me to get the poison out. So, no matter what someone is led to believe or told, everyone is creative in some way or another. But it's not the ending result of a patient's artwork that's important. It's the journey they took along the way and the realizations that they were able to make. Art therapy has the ability to help patients process their emotions to begin healing. Art therapy also provides insight into creations and helps patients understand aspects of themselves that they didn't even know existed. This idea of self-exploration leads patients towards insightful conclusions, which, which then leads to a general overall sense of relief and overall better mental health. The creative process used in art therapy to create artwork helps patients to relax and get their minds off of any existing disease or sickness. While creating a, pro a project, the patient pays attention to what they are making, the problems they come across, and how to solve them, which causes them to relax and forget about their overhanging issue. Alice Kinsler, the head of the art therapy services at Concord Hospital, just said, just this morning, I looked in on the harpist playing music for a chemothera chemotherapy patient. His eyes were closed. He was crying. When she finished playing her song, he opened his eyes and looked at her and said, when you played for me, my pain went away. Thank you. Giving patients the ability to feel hopeful and happy again is one of the most important goals of art therapy. Art therapy is also very individualized, and this personalized attention towards patients helps them feel important and hopeful. And newfound hope is so important for a patient to have, because it can give an ill patient the, go the will to go on and recover. As Pinsler also gave examples of how hope is important to a patient. Oftentimes, patients in a hospital feel hopeless and dehumanized from their conditions and treatments that they've gone through. They don't feel like themselves anymore. However, Art therapy has the power to take pain away. It enriches humanity, which causes patients to feel relief and happiness and even excitement. Since treatments can be so dehumanizing, they can feel hopeless, and hope plays a large role in health. Mental health is important, and art can be the key to healing. Like a patient once said, if you don't think what I think, feel what I feel, experience what I experience, See what I see when I look at myself, others, and the world around me. How could you possibly know what is best for me? Thank you. Any questions? Yep. Where do you plan on donating the I have been in contact with the head of the uh, volunteer services at Concord Hospital, and Sometime within this week or next week, she will be open for the donation. Any more? Thank you.